Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday. It's June 1st. Actually, this is Wednesday, June 1st. I'm sorry. Uh, Wednesday, June 1st. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And um, we had a nice trend down, only a couple of entries before it reversed, though, and then we had a really um, nice trend back up. And uh, there were several entries up through here. It was a little tricky right in here because we weren't getting back to the trend line, but you needed to be aware of that support area right across there. And when you put your trend line, it, it makes it obvious. So I always tell you, use those trend lines. Um, and then you, and we'll talk about those when we get to them, but uh, several trades on the way up here. And there's actually, this one's actually, um, could be green itself too. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it green. So, but we'll talk, we'll back out here and talk about the trades. And I am better today. My voice is a little better. I still, people tease me, I sound like Barry White. So, um, unfortunately, bear with me. Uh, and I may have to pause occasionally. Um, but, uh, but I'll get through this. So, um, but you can see, in the big scheme of things, it really was a range day. Here's your overnight high and your overnight low. We spent... Did we actually get above it here? No, we didn't get above. So we stayed within the high, overnight high and low all day, although we trended down and then the rest of the day we spent trending back up to test the highs again. So uh, for the most part, it's a range type day, but it's a big enough range day that you got a nice trend working through here. So. Um, it was all downhill till about nine o'clock and then that's you got your reversal type pattern and then it was all uphill after that so um, that's what we're looking at but let's back out make it a little bigger here where it's easier to see and we'll go from there the first trade I saw was just after seven o'clock you got a little move up here I don't have my trend line on there let me get that on there there's a little trend line working right up through there we got a close attempt to make a new high. That's like a double test of this high here. Notice you got a double top. You tested it once, tested it twice. But we broke higher and turned down right off the EMA, right off the trend line. That's a very bearish bar. That's a pretty good setup. Just go just put a stop there and go short. That was a quick, easy move. And, um, you know, if you held on to a runner, you know, even if you waited till the first bar that closed outside and exited, you still got several points there. So it was a really good trade. And then this is a double top, so that's a new high. And then you pull back first entry, pull back. You get a second entry long that fails. That's a trap. Uh, a real, you know, nice, small, bearish reversal type bar. Uh, just go short. Just put a stop right there. Um, it's a little bit close there. I'm not quite sure if there's enough uh, room to get out there. I'm not going to count it, but... Uh, you could have let it break lower and use the limit order right there at the bottom and you still would have got filled on that one but this has been a pretty good downtrend so just uh, you know I wouldn't be too afraid to go short right there we weren't back to the EMA we weren't back to the trend line but that trap and the key is you got that trap and it traps people going long trying to catch a bottom and you're probably going to get a scalp out of that minimum. So uh, then we do make a new low. We come up here, we get a break. There's actually a second entry short right there, but notice that trend line working up. That's the first close outside of it. So you got to be careful on those because it, it could tick a tick or so down and turn up. Like it ended up going up, but you got enough room to get out there. I, I did give it a green arrow, but. Um, it's pretty aggressive, so I would be leery of it. And then notice you got the new low. You're coming up, you get a first entry short right here, and you pull back, you get a second entry. It didn't really fail because it got enough for a scalp, but it bounced off that trend line right up through there, and so you could treat that like a failure and um, and go along there. It's a little bit aggressive. It's it's probably not going to fool a lot of people, but there, there's still a lot of people that are short down through here that will probably exit if this thing bounces, makes a double top that's higher than the low of the day. 
because uh, that's not a good sign. Uh, it means something's changing. So uh, if you if you understand that and you want to be aggressive, that's a good one to go long on. The better one is to wait on this one. When it, notice you got those lows there. You test it once. This is that double test rule. Look at that bearish or bullish reversal bar. It's a relatively large bar, so you may lay, let it break higher and drop a limit order in. Get close enough to get, stay within your two your uh, two point rule or your eight tick rule, and you really could have done that. Uh, but you know, basically, I'll just basically I'd put a stop right there, buy a stop, and just go with it. That's a nice reversal there. It's a nice setup, and it's somewhat of a reversal pattern. We pushed through the EMA, we pulled back, we pushed through even further, pretty strongly here, and then pulled back and couldn't go lower than that. Look at all the support right across there, and it reverses. And we're looking for a possible reversal anyway. I failed to talk about that. The gap on the we closed here yesterday, and we opened down here. So there's a gap on the daily chart between this point and where we closed yesterday. I mean, you, obviously there's not a gap there on this chart, but on a daily chart there would be. Uh, by the time this daily bar closed, there was no gap because we rallied and filled it. And so that generally is, you know, what you can expect to happen. So I wasn't surprised that we reversed at all, especially once we had the break and the failure to go lower. But when you sit here and you watch this all day every day, you tend to learn the tendencies of it and you understand price action and it makes sense so uh, people say well, how'd you know it was going to reverse well when you watch it do it for years you kind of get a feel for what it's going to do and, and nothing's ever written in stone nothing's ever 100 percent but most days they're going to try to fill that gap and today was one of those days they filled it so but anyway then we we make this rally up you got Two, you actually got a leg up and a little double correction, then another leg up. So you got two legs up, and then of course it corrects. And you got a little trend working down here. You get your first close outside. It tries to make a new low, and there, this is almost a repeat pattern of this. Um, you got some lows there, and you try to go lower two more times, and you make just a double bottom, and you kind of reverse. I like that one for a long for the trout. And this is two legs down right here, too. See the high, move down, a little correction, move down. So that's two legs right there as well. Um, so I like going along there. This is a reversal type pattern. And you probably trap some more shorts right there. You can see how it burst up real quickly. That's because we probably trap people. And then it comes back and gives you another chance to enter. Um, we didn't quite get back to the EMA again, but look at all that support across there. And this is basically a double bottom here, and this is a little higher low. Um, that's a fairly bullish bar, although the next one was more sideways, but it's still not a very neutral bar. Even though it looks neutral, it closed almost on its high, within a tick of its high. Um, since there's a little overlap right there, this is one that you might let break higher and then drop a limit order in there just to get a little better entry. Just to get it, give it a second, see what it's going to do. Um, but you could just put a stop there if you wanted to. And off it goes. And again, there's one leg up, pull back, and a second leg up. And then you get your little that, your little break of this trend line, this short-term trend line, move to a new high, and then it tests it again. It's two legs up to a new high, and it reverses. Just what you'd expect to happen. So that's why I'm always telling you, use these short-term trend lines, because that was your clue. Was this was your first break, and I bet you, no doubt, a lot of people tried to get short right there. It's a good ways away from the EMA. There's two legs up, so there's reasons to think it may come back to the EMA and probably back to the lower trend line. But a lot of times they'll trap people first, and so you get your break, and you get the two legs up to a new high, and then it reverses. And then look what happens. You get one leg down, correction, and a second leg down. You get your break. Close outside, attempted a new low. It couldn't make it a, a new low, really, because uh, it's right into that trend line there. Oops. And you see it bounced right off of it, basically. So um, this is a really big bar. So you, you may not have gotten in this one. You might have skipped it, but I still like it because it's a key entry point. It's right off the trend line. It's You know, you're looking for a... Uh, another move up, you've come back, you've 
got your break, you got to attempt at a new low, you got a double bottom. We've tested that level four times. Once, twice, three times, four times, and it couldn't get lower. And then the better entry was probably to wait here for it to pull back and then go higher and then enter right there. That was a quick, easy one. Then it pulls back yet again. And your entry is right here. And there's actually a two-legged pullback right there. There's a move down, a correction, and a second leg down. Um, on a smaller chart, you'd see a second entry long right here. Um, this one's borderline being green because it didn't quite get back to the EMA correction. It didn't quite get back to the trend line, not the EMA. I'm sorry. I'm on this cold medicine. I kind of feel like I'm, I'm not thinking exactly straight here. But, uh, yeah, it didn't quite get back to the trend line, not the EMA. That was it. But, again, that's – and notice the stems down there. Uh, it's telling you that even though it's selling down there, Buying's really coming in strong, and um, so I like going long right there, even though it's not quite back, because we just came off the low side, so you would expect that we're either going to go to the top, or we're going to make another push up, and then maybe fall back down and get a break, and, and it would have been nice to see this go higher, but it does, it falls down, you get your break, and again, there's two legs down, so there's a second entry long right there, but notice your trend line. And you don't have a break of it yet. So you don't get your break here. And then you get your attempt at a new low. And then look at that bullish bar right there. Just go long right there. And you get another great move up. And then it pulls back. And once again here, um, you get a second entry long here. Look, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. It's right off the EMA, right off the trend line. It's very close to 2 o'clock. So, uh, but the key here is you don't have a close outside that trend line yet. Um, you might could argue that that closed outside of it, but it's born like that. So, um, and you can see that fits perfectly down there off those highs. So, um, and this one turns down right off. Well, you don't want to go short there. You do have a break in a new high, but most times you get a break and two legs up. And so here's your break and your first leg. And so if you get a measured move, your second leg's probably going to go to here. And we don't quite get that, so. Uh, but you still got your break, two legs up to a new high, and then we just started correcting. So um, it, it's probably tempting to want to go along here, but I would go along even there because you still don't have your close outside. You don't get a close outside really till here, and even that was questionable than here. And there's too big a chance it turns back down. It doesn't, but you don't know that. By you got to follow the rules, and the rules tell you you probably should wait. So. I wouldn't take that trade, especially after a break and already having a new high because sometimes you don't get two legs up. Once you get this break of this trend line and a new high, you got to have a really good setup to go long from that point on. And that's what people miss. And, you know, they, they, at this turning point, they're confused. What do I do? Well, you probably don't do anything. You just wait until you either get a trap or something or you get your reversal and a trend, confirmed trend going the other way. So otherwise, you just sit there and do nothing. That's kind of the transition point, and people really get hung up on that because people think you always have to be looking for a trade, which is not the case. You only need two or three of these trades every day, and there's always usually anywhere from five to a dozen trades. On average, there's probably eight to ten trades, um, and all you need is two or three of them every day to make a great living, and so... Wait on the good ones. And where do, where do the best trades always happen at these key entry points, which is the trend lines and the horizontal support and resistance and occasionally the EMA as well. And when the EMA and the trend line are together, they really make good setups a lot of times. Uh, here's one right here where the EMA and the trend line are together. Look at that big move down. But look where the big moves always happen, the key entry points, which are generally the trend lines. There's your big move, there's your big move, there's a big move, you didn't quite get back to the trend line, but um, there's your next big move off the trend line, here's your next big move, it's, you know, it's a break of a trend line, but it's still a key entry point because you're looking for a retest of the high, here's your next big move right off the trend line, EMA, so just keep that in mind, 
And when we got a big trend like this going up, we don't want to short. And when we got a big trend like this going down, we don't really want to buy until we get a reversal type pattern or a trap of some kind. And when you're in between, you, you know, notice there's only one blue in there. Most of these are green. You're kind of in between, so you're just kind of waiting, and then you get a confirmed trend going the other way. Now you just start buying. And up here, you probably would have done anything. It's too late in the day, but just assuming this was midday and you still had another day, so there's, we're mostly going sideways here now. So you, you're going to be looking for traps. or uh, But when you start getting a confirmed trend line working back down, that's when you start going short. So I hope that makes sense. But uh, I'm not going to prolong it today. Uh, my voice is much better today, but I'm not going to push it. And uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. And we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.